Hello, uh, 320 enthusiasts. It's Alex here, Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie over here in Australia. And I've just uh, discovered something very, very interesting um, around around the power supply problems that some of us have with our 320s. And let's let's face it, the power supply is, is the radio's Achilles heel. And we tend to jump in and, and change uh, capacitors on the power supply being the 110 volt capacitors uh that's pretty standard procedure to go in and change these okay now look over the years um i've, I've noted all sorts of different um problems with power supplies um so all sorts of symptoms people ring me and ask me for help all the time and i do the best i can to help people out but one of the um one of the problems that has come up over the years um that uh, doesn't seem to have a logical sort of a, an explanation for it is um, I've got very low voltage on the um, on the 110 volt outlet, you know, something like 11 to 25 volts. I can't figure it out. And and when we look up here at the um, unregulated high voltage, it should be 121 volts. And, um, you know, you're getting stupid voltages there like uh, 25 volts as well. Um, and, you know, the, the obvious thing is, uh, looking down here at the um, at this particular transistor, because as you recall, um, this transistor here is um, driven by uh, a pulse train that comes from a, a little switch mode power supply over here. Um, well, it's not a switch mode power supply, but it's a, a switching regulator. Um, yeah, so that, what that does is um, it yeah, op 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 offers a train of, of pulses at, at about 40 kilohertz to the base of this transistor that switches it off and on um, and current flows through the transformer giving movement for the primary side. It's stepped up to 110 or 121 in this case being the unregulated um, voltage and, and we get a regulation here. So yeah, we're getting silly voltages like 11 to 25 here and 11 to 25 here. So, you know, many people are a little bit ignorant about what's going on over here and they start changing regulator transistors and they get into all sorts of um, um, uh, uh, busily uh, mucking around changing unnecessary components here and nothing seems to change. And look, um, that exact thing happened to me um, while changing a set of these capacitors the other day on a power supply. I changed a set of capacitors um, and... The power supply was working okay, but you know, it's it's pretty good maintenance to change these capacitors, especially after 20, 30 years of being in service. So um, yeah, I changed the two capacitors and all of a sudden I had low voltage here and a low voltage here. So I found myself in a similar predicament than, uh, than a lot of people have in the past. So yeah, I was lucky uh, in a sense that I didn't suspect uh, a component failure because I just changed two capacitors and that was it, which led me to finding a, a, what I consider a pretty intricate little fault with these power supplies that may not have been discovered uh, as yet. But um, let's have a look and, and, and see what I found. Okay, here's a, here's a view of a power supply. And if we look at uh, the terminals uh, there, and there, I'm sure that's them. Yep, there and there and there. That's one of the capacitors, and the other one is there and there. And these, this is the one that I want to talk about. This capacitor here, there and there. Okay. Right. So <clears throat> when we when we think about it, this capacitor, and I'll just look at it here. One side of it goes to ground. Yeah. So that is the ground side of the capacitor right there. So this track here, this piece of track here, that's connected to ground. And that piece of track joins to the other side of this board, which is a, a, has a major track area also to ground. So let's look at... Again, here's a, here's a single board that's um, a bit of a rubbish board. So that's the track that I'm talking about right there. So if we roll it over, you'll see all around here, all of this is ground. Yeah. So where does this track join on to the other track? 
there, there'll be a, a, a connection point between this track and the other track underneath, okay, which will make that ground. Now, in relation to ground, this is the ground pin. This is the ground pin. And this wire here goes on, on the other end of the, the pin there, and it goes down to the board underneath, which eventually goes to the to ground on the set. Okay, so when I was fault finding why, I had my pulse train on here, but nothing's happening across here, but yet the transistor tests okay. And I discovered that the this emitter was in fact not connected to ground. Not connected to ground. Right. And when you look at this um, this particular board here, here's the emitter for TR3 here on this ground section where, so there's the emitter and it's connected to the ground section the same as that capacitor right there. So this is the ground pin here. So when I put my meter between ground here and ground here, I had an open circuit. So the, the, this part of the board, the grounding of this part of the board was not being connected to the other side of the board, which then gets connected to that pin and goes to ground. So in other words, my emitter was isolated from ground. And this capacitor was also isolated from ground as well. So what's going on here? So when you look very, very closely at these particular boards, and some show it a little bit better than others, I'll zoom in. And you notice there's a, a little dent just there. That's supposed to be a joining point between this board, this, this track, and the track underneath. And in fact, on, on the set that I was working on, that little join had become a no join. <laughs> so me simply changing or, or desoldering that, that capacitor there and then resoldering it back in, that's the two legs for it, somehow this had become unsweated and it was no, no contact. So I went along um, on the one that I was working on and I, I re-sweated it and still I had no connection at all. There was no connection between ground here and ground here. And it's all through that tiny little, tiny little stud there that was at fault. What a pain in the neck. But luckily I found it. So this is what I did. Okay, so here we are on our crappy little board. And I'm going to turn the crappy little board over. By the way, that, that's, the, that's the, the capacitor connection on the crappy little board. Turn the power down. And that's the crappy little capacitor there, the one that we don't normally change. So what I actually did, I went underneath the board and I soldered that part of the, of the leg of the capacitor to ground. So in fact, the capacitor was soldered to ground on the bottom side of the board and the top side of the board. And that gave me a connection between this part of the, or this track and the main earth track underneath. Yeah. And consequently, down to my earth pin that goes down to the bottom board and to the set earth. So, just in summary, the problem was a mechanical problem where the grounding of TR3 was, was, was not grounding, and that was not grounding as well. So by simply fixing up that link between the top and the bottom sections of the, the, of the printed circuit board, it fixed the problem. Ask myself, how many people out there have got this problem or had this problem of low voltage on the outside, especially after they've, they've taken the precautions, or so we believe the precautions of changing the capacitors on the, on the power supply? I've, I've heard so many times, well, I've changed the capacitors, I've tried this, I've tried that, and I still can't get 110 volts. So this is one of the things that you should definitely be looking for, and it's a very, very easy test. Grab your multimeter, 
and test between that point there, right there, that point there, and that pin there. And you should have zero on your meter. You should have a conduction between there and there. Okay, I'll just go over it a bit closer. That point there and that pin there, you should have zero, zero uh, between the two. So there you go, guys. Um, a little bit of a, well, a, a few hours on the on the bench to figure that one out. It wasn't exactly what um, what I was looking for. I thought the problem would be something else. We always, um, always say to ourselves, well, we've got a we've got a uh, a component failure. We all look for component failure as well. The transistor's not oscillating. You must have a crook transistor, so we we change transistors and you know, et cetera, et cetera, and still can't figure out what the problem is. Then we start looking back at diodes here and, you know, there's all sorts of things that um, that we get into a big knot about when we should be looking at something a little bit more simple like um, like the circuit board instead of um, components. So, yep, live and learn. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the definite tests I would do. Yeah, straight, just put your meter from there to there, should have zero. If you haven't got zero, it's never going to work in a million years. Okay, it's Alex here, Victor Kilo 2, Papa Radio Charlie saying 73 guys, continuing saga <laughs> of Klansmen's and especially Klansmen power supplies. Always fun. Catch us again. Bye-bye.